so we've hit a thousand hours on our Yamaha 45s and a part of the thousand hour service is to check and or adjust your valve clearance and I couldn't find much about this online like how to do it um, where your uh, top dead center markings were so we thought we'd just shoot a quick video how to get to your valves uh, how to find your top dead center markings and then what you need to do to adjust it or check it now this is for our motors which are four JH45s. You <laughs> do it yourself at your own risk. <laughs> you can sue me, but I'm poor, so. <laughs> Something I should say, I should have said at the very beginning is isolate your motor. You've got an isolation switch here. <laughs> so you start by taking taking off this pretty Yamaha cover and also the V-belt cover that's on the front and they're just, a, they're a 10 mil socket. You may need to convert that for American viewers. We, it's we four see. quarters of a board eagle. <laughs> One tenth of a freedom. <laughs> you don't have to take the the V belt cover off. I just find it it's good to take it off and have a look at the motor and see if there's any leaks or anything. So again, it's just another ten mil socket. Now it's just. There's three 12 mil, 12 mil bolts on top of the rocker cover, or rocker arm cover. So one in the middle, one each end. There's an electrical connection on the end here, which I'm assuming is for the diaphragm, um, or it's just a pressure sensor or something. And then there's the, um, I don't know what they call it on this end, on this, it's like a PCV hose that sucks a little oil vapor at the top and then so the engine can recirculate. But it's just a hose here that you have to take off. Um, you can either leave it on and take it off the air box or take it off the rocker cover and leave it on the air box. And I swapped this out for um, hose clamps because they had these weird like um, spring steel clamps that over time lose, lose their grip and you start to get leaks. This electrical connector, just a red tab, you just pull it back and it'll come off. When you do this, make sure the motor is cold. The workshop manual does say to do it cold, so I'm assuming because if, you, if your motor is warm or hot, I'm going to assume that everything's expanded and with the heat or your tolerances have changed. So if you adjust it when it's warm, it's not gonna be within factory specs when it's cold. This hose, um, if you've not had it off recently, is going to have oil in it. So just keep that in mind, you know, pull it off and dump oil. Cool. Cool. This is your valve cover. And there'll be a rubber gasket on the inside. You just want to check and make sure it's not leaking is not split. These are your upper arms and then your valves will be under here on valve springs and your camshaft. And what what you're checking is the gap between the arm and the top of the um, valve spring and how you adjust it is by backing this 12 mil nut off whilst holding a flathead screwdriver in the top. Once this nut is loose, you can wind this in or out and that'll um, increase or decrease your clearance here. The firing order is one, two, three, four. And the actual cylinder numbers are obviously one, two, three, four. 
So what we need to do is get cylinder one to TDC, which is top dead center. And the way you do that is by rotating the crank on the front of the motor. So you will rotate the motor from the crank, which are at the front, the 19 millimeter socket. Um, you want to rotate it clockwise. Uh, you can go uh, clockwise and anti-clockwise, but because being a marine motor, you have a saltwater impeller at the front. When you rotate the engine, you'll rotate the impeller as well, just because it's on the belt. You could take the belt off, but you're just creating more work. You can go anti-clockwise, um, but you only want to do it in small increments because of the saltwater impeller. If you keep spinning it anti-clockwise, you can run the chance of flipping the, or even snapping the, the impeller fins. And then it's just problems. <laughs> 19, 19 mil socket on the crank. You are going to be fighting the compression of the cylinders. You'll, you'll. <laughs> <laughs> um, you'll, you'll hear it hissing. So you'll get to a compression stroke where the cylinder's coming up and it's pushing the air through the exhaust or and trying to open the exhaust valve. Something I should say, I should have said at the very beginning is isolate your motor. You've got an isolation switch here, which is down. And then you should also have isolation switches in the boat somewhere. Uh, why I say that is because diesel engines run off compression. So if you're turning the motor and it's not isolated and you're compressing what it's ever in the cylinder, you could start your motor. And if you got your hand on your ratchet on the crank and that motor fires up, you're going to have a bad time. So isolate it and then rotate it. And then when you rotate it, you'll see your lifter arms go up and down. Probably should mention the explosions and no one's boat blowing up. It's near New Year's That's and the person, I love no. fireworks. That person didn't isolate their motor. <laughs> you can hear the hissing? Yeah. <coughs> Over the fireworks, slightly. Okay. This is slow. Don't rush it. Motors are expensive. All I'm doing is I'm, I'm watching the lifter arms and waiting to see the cylinder one intake uh, either lift or close because then you know that you're somewhere where you should be and then you can check your, um, your top dead center marking on your flywheel, which I'll show you where that is as well the number one starting the move so I'll check the marking down here so you'll take this bung out with this rubber plug so you can see don't lose it if it's damaged I'd recommend getting a new one and then when you put it back in just get some silicon grease or marine grease or something and just put a little a very light film on it just to stop it degrading and breaking right here is where you're looking for your markings. This is where the red plug comes out. These are your markings for one and four. And you'll see one and four right there. You want to get this in the middle. There's a notch on each side of this little window in there. mark them up in the middle using the markings that are on the flywheel you'll see a scale and that scale will have a large marking a bunch of little ones another large marking a bunch of little ones and another large marking so you want to be in the middle the middle large marking and then once you get to that on whatever cylinders firing which for us is cylinder one. You'll come to your lifter arms at cylinder one and you'll get your trusty feeler gauge and you'll find 0.2 of a millimeter. So you'll get your 0.2, you'll come to your rocker arm and you'll slide it between the arm and the lifter. 
and you should be able to just slide it in. There should be a little bit of drag. And if you think it's too loose, you can go to 0.25, which is the maximum it can be. The way I like to have these adjusted is that 0 0.2 is the biggest is the biggest size you can fit in. So 0.25 shouldn't fit. And then you do that for the exhaust valve as well. So that's cylinder one. And then you can just follow your manual from here on. So you just rotate, rotate the crank 180 degrees. Check your marking on your flywheel that you're now at cylinder three, which is this one, because you're following the firing order. So you go to cylinder three, check your marking, make sure you're at top dead center, check your clearance. Your clearance is fine, rotate 180 degrees, move to cylinder four, make sure you're at top dead center using the markings. When, you, when your clearance is fine here, rotate 180 degrees to cylinder two, which is the last one. Your valve clearance should be between 0.15 of a mil millimeter to 0.25 of a millimeter. I like to adjust it at 0.2 and 0.25 being just too tight to push in. This is how I was shown by Yanmar in Cape Town. So it's the way I'll keep doing it and it's all within the factory specs. If you do have to adjust it, the 12 mil locking nut and a flat blade screwdriver. Have your ring spanner on the, on the nut and your screwdriver on top. Hold your screwdriver whilst backing off the locking nut. Once the locking nut's loose, it doesn't have to be really loose. You just to break it off a little bit. Once it's broken off, use your feeler gauge in here and adjust your screw. When you're happy with how it's set, hold your screw in here and tighten the locking nut, making sure that you don't move your screwdriver. Tighten this up so it can't back off again. Don't snap it, you'll be in for a bad time. And then double check your clearance. So when you put the rocket cover back onto the engine block, you wanna make sure that you don't have any dirt or debris or hair just in the mating surface around the top. And it's also a good idea to maybe get some new engine oil and lubricate the rubber seal. It's like a big O-ring that goes around the cover. Just lubricate that. Cause you don't want any dirt or anything getting under the seal and then potentially causing a leak later.